Hello and welcome to part two of this face extraction video on Spark AR. So in the last video we created this face extraction group. So we created this uh, spider web of controls to allow our face to be basically blanked out by taking a selection and basically stretching that pixel selection over a face and blurring it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to then start to now uh, create new eyes, mouth and reposition them as we see fit. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to use alpha textures. So we're going to need a photo editing program that allows us to work in layers and one that allows us to save as PNG. Okay, so I'm going to start off by going to help and downloading my face asset pack from the Spark AR website if you haven't already got this available to you. I'm going to download the face, uh, re, uh, bleh, face Reference Asset Pack, open this up, and inside the Textures folder, once I get the icons up, there should be something called face mesh trackers.png. We're then going to open this up in our photo editing program, and we should be greeted with something that looks like this. So what you see in front of you now is a average of a human face. These red dots indicating points where the mesh would stretch on the standard face mesh model. And this is where we can start adding in our details. This is also how you paint in things like makeup or other uh, details onto the face. But we're just going to use this as a reference for our alpha mesh uh, materials. So I'm going to create a new layer and drag this new layer below our mesh. And I'm going to make sure that I've got a white selected and I'm going to paint with quite a soft edge to it. So I'm gonna just do this um, bit by bit. So I'm gonna do the one eye first. And because this is an average face, I'm actually just gonna flip, um, sorry, mirror my um, layer afterwards because this is exactly even on those sides. If it wasn't, then obviously you'd have to eyeball this and use the kind of grid as a reference point. But I'm going to do this fairly speedily. So I'm just going to zoom in. And I might have to soften my edges a little bit more. Uh, if I've got a softer brush than that. Let's see. Uh, we'll see how this goes as we go through it. I might have to uh, edge off, feather off the edges a bit more. So I'm just going to paint in white around the eyes and I'm just going to go off to the edges a little bit and the softer and the more um, blended I can make the edges so where the uh, feathering happens around here the better it will look. Uh, in fact what I'm just going to do just to make it easy for you to see what I'm doing I'm just going to fill the background in black so you can see how well the feathering is doing for our blending. So the better that this blends out into transparency, the more uh, smooth your effect will look and the less it will look so harsh. So I'm just going to see if I can soften this up a little bit. Might want to use my eraser and just sort of increase the brush size. So again, this is a little bit of tweaking around, just trying to soften off these edges, trying to avoid any harsh drop offs in our transparencies. You could also uh, feather this layer. So in Photoshop, I could just go to blur, Gaussian blur, for example and just feather this off more and in fact I'm going to see that a little bit I'm not careful though it's still going to give us sharp edges but it'll be a bit less uh, immediate so let me just replace this white around here because I definitely want this to be like this there we go so I'm just going to turn that off so now I should have this one eye selected if I turn off this grid so I can see how that looks. So I've got this white with a very faint white around the edges. So I'm going to save this onto my machine. 
I'm going to make sure I save this as a PNG because this will keep the transparency. I'm just going to save this as left eye. Again, I could always uh, call something more appropriate to myself. I'm just going to call this left eye if it makes sense to me. Because we're also trying to keep things named in a way that makes most logical sense if somebody asks us to pick up your project. Now I've done a left eye, I'm just going to go to layer. I'm just going to flip this image. So I'm going to flip it horizontally. So there we go. So now I should have my right eye. And if I look back at my mesh, like I said, it's mirrored on both sides of the mesh anyway, so this should still look correct. I'm going to save this onto my computer as well. And I'm going to save this into the same place as a PNG. And I'm just going to call this one the right eye. There we go. And uh, now that they're both eyes, I can also do my mouth. So again, I'm just going to create another new layer. Always make sure we turn our grid off before we save our PNGs so we don't have the grid on show because that would actually ruin the effect we're going for. I'm just going to do this one a bit more rough. I'm not going to spend as long on the mouth. I'm just going to get a rough cut of this. Du -du -du -du. Cut, 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 cut. Paint it in white. Turn the grid off, check how that looks. There we go. And again, if I wanted to do a better job, I would spend longer on it. I'm just doing this fairly fast, uh, just so you can see what we're doing. So I'm going to file save this also onto my machine. I'm just going to call this one mouth PNG. Mouth. Save it onto my desktop as well. Into so normally I'd save a folder and put all this in. I'm doing this largely speedily there we go so now i've created those uh vital textures i can go to my desktop i can select those three files and drag them into my assets folder so i should have mouth right eye and left eye as textures so now all we need to do is go to our face tracker right click on it add a face mesh like so and on this face mesh, we're going to create a new material. So this material will be what is now going to show that part of the face, for example, the one eye. I'm going to turn off the eyes and mouth so we've got them visible. And this new material, I'm going to select it, go to advanced render options, turn off depth test and depth buffer. Go to the texture and choose my face tracker texture, making sure it is flat. So now we've got our face back on top of our other face. And where it says alpha, which is currently grayed out, I'm going to turn it on. Select our right eye, for example. So now we should have this face mesh that has the right eye on. As you can see. And I'm just going to now quickly duplicate that face mesh. Create another new material. This new material I'm going to set save to be flat. Make sure our dev test is off and our texture is also our face tracker texture. But this time our alpha is going to be the other eye. So now we should have the just two eyes on show. And depending on how well you did your blending, depends on how sharp the edges will be around that region. So I did an okay job when these eyes, it's not, there's no real harsh cut off lines, which is good. So now I could select one of these face meshes and I could move the eye. And the reason we're using face meshes is it keeps the kind of distortion, the barreling of the face a little bit. It will start to look a bit weird if you kind of go like this. But this is a similar way, or basically this is the way, that you would extract facial features to put onto 2D characters or animations, etc. All you'd use is a face mesh that's over the top of that layer, which would have that character on with the extracted eyes or mouth positioned to it, making sure they don't clip into each other. Uh, and the layer of hierarchy is set correctly. So I'm just going to create one more face mesh. And you can guess what this one's going to be. This one's going to be our mouth. And again, making sure that's flat. Making sure that the depth test is off. Uh, texture set to face tracker. 
and the alpha is set to be our mouth. There we go. So our mouth is a little bit harsh. I didn't do quite spend as quite as long on it, but anyway. So I could now using this, I could select my two eyes here. I could duplicate those two layers. I could give myself uh, more eyes. Now we are getting a little bit of clipping going on there. So let's just uh, check why that's happening. Why that is the case. So we're going to go on to their materials and just check that these are set correctly. There we go, so depth test was turned on, which I didn't want on one of those layers, so I fixed that. So I've got to make sure depth test is off, otherwise they will clip and they will mask each other. And you also find that quite often these position values get uh, messed up when we start uh, moving things too much. So I'm just going to quickly reset these to 000. Because for some reason the duplications do uh, sometimes bug out. So I have to uh, manually correct it first and then it should look correct. So to fix it I always just go 000 on X, Y and Z and then move them independently, not moving them as a group. Because that can uh, bug it out a little bit. Just check all these are correctly set up. So again, it's now we're at a stage where we're just tweaking it, refining it, making sure everything looks kind of all right. Things look a little bit to one side to me, so I am going to just check a, oh, these are correctly lined up. So things that look right, we just need to override the positions and fix them until they do look what would look natural to us. Now we will notice that when we go to the side here, we will start to get this clipping. And that's because of the way that our face is being extruded essentially or masked. And we could possibly look at fixing that by making sure that death test is off as well. Maybe that won't fix that. The way to fix that possibly would be to select the meshes and just bring them forward slightly, like the minutest amount. But again, it's not going to be perfect using this method. If I use my, if I select my face mesh here and just turn the visibility off um, and just make sure all these are set back to the default zeros, so we don't have any kind of weirdness going on. So yeah, we can see there's a little bit of issues we're getting here um, and again it's just about working out how to resolve it so quite often it's a case of toggling things until it sort of looks right and we may also have to change the layer hierarchy on these just a little bit Is that eye a little bit off? Anyway, anyway, you can get the point. You see what I'm trying to say here? How you, how you can kind of extrude face pieces. Um, there is a few little glitches and bugs you have to work sort of play about with this. So hence why this isn't a effect that's sort of widely used uh, outside of being used on. Um, 2D characters or other characters, not characters, uh, so to speak, that are live action. So again, I'm going to have to do a bit more work on this fixing this, getting this back to how it was. So I'm just going to quickly uh, undo everything I've just done to get back to a working state that I was kind of semi-happy with. Um, let's just turn that off and see how that looks now. But as you can see, as soon as we start going sideways, we are going to get these issues where the meshes are going to quite, uh, interfere a little bit. Um, but that is somewhat the nature of doing it this way. Um, so just be warned, and this is why this is not an effect I would use often on live action. I would use this more, like I said, on 2D animated or 3D ca animated characters, not on a live feed, so to speak. Because as you can see, things like putting my finger in front of my eye means that finger is then 
they're going to be obviously in camera for that selection and then show up. So we need to consider all this when we're working with face extraction. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, like, I, like always, um, all project files will be available on the Patreon page um, in the $10 tier. Uh, I try and include all templates I've created, um, but again, don't feel like you ever need to donate. You can get everything that's in those packs by following these guys, and you'll be able to get to the stage that you see today within this video. Uh, if you never to like, comment and subscribe, share with your follow with your friends and followers, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.